My friend asked me to come over to his place and help him out. He has an interesting situation happening on his place. The brick face veneer that's on the house, after barely two winters, is peeling off. Whole big chunks of brick is peeling off from the building and uh, it's obviously a safety issue. He's got children playing around here. You can see a basketball hoop. They're playing uh, with a big and heavy basketball and uh, he says as soon as the balls hit some of the bricks they fall off in big one, big chunks. It's gonna be a handheld shot. We will investigate and uh, inspect the uh, brickwork from up close and uh, we will compare our findings to what the building code has to say. It's gonna be a handheld shot. Come on along and take a look with me. Let's see. Yes, he complained that underneath the window here there are bricks breaking and missing. And yep, that's how they look like. They are missing, they're falling off in chunks. They have uh, crack lines running through them. And that one's also been replaced or shored up or kind of patched back in. He also said there's uh, another brick missing right here next to the entrance door, about head height. Just imagine what one of these heavy bricks can uh, do uh, to you if they fall on you. This is not looking good and uh, yeah, I'm already spotting some of the issues. So uh, you can see that this brick has a textured uh, finish, a raised textured finish and on the back side of the brick uh, there are some small ridges here. What I can see is that on the back side of the brick there is no mortar. Here is the mortar along the edges, but I don't think I don't see nothing on the back side of the brick. That's not normal. The uh, the back side should be uh, it's called back buttering. There should be enough mortar here holding the brick in place. What I'm also seeing here is that uh, mortar joint is extremely uneven. There is something there in the corner and it's tapering off to uh, barely nothing there in that corner. And again, starting in this corner, there is an itty bit of mortar here, tapering off to nothing. And yeah, that's also called barely, that's, that's nothing there, that's not enough. This, this is not how mortar joint work should look like on a, a brick face veneer or on any kind of masonry. This is unbelievable. Let's take a look at this trowel work here. Yeah, that's not, uh, this is not uh, quality workmanship here. The, uh, the trial work shouldn't look like this. The, uh, the lip of this brick here is, is exposed. There's not enough mortar here in this joint either. Nothing is holding this brick from popping off and, and I can see uh, excessive cracking everywhere. So this next brick is gonna, is already delaminating there. And there's another crack line uh, running there, up, and probably to the underside. Yep, there it is. So this is gonna be the next to fall off. This is not how these bricks should look like. Uh, I'm also noticing that in small amounts where there is mortar, it's, uh, it's crumbling and dusting off. And uh, it's probably due to uh, its content. There should be enough cement and lime in it to make this mortar mix. And probably when this was mixed in, basically it is just wet sand with no cement content in it barely. And look at that, I can make it smoother just with rubbing it with my finger. That's not how mortar joint should look like. Uh, another. Uh, evidence uh, supporting that there was excessive water in the uh, mortar mix is this huge cracks everywhere here in the corners going up everywhere and this is part of a building that doesn't get any rain and doesn't get any snow so freeze and thaw cycle here uh, is not an issue 
all these cracks, this evidence of missing uh, mortar. This is not how mortar joints should look like. Definitely not. With these huge cracks everywhere. And on the other side here, I'm seeing, I'm seeing this brick here. Oh my, look at this, it's already loose. Let me just steady the camera here. Yep, you can see this one moving. This is gonna be the next brick to fall off. And uh, basically it's just held in place by this little bump in the, this brick in the corner. That's not good. So uh, workmanship is extremely low level and uh, and that's further evidenced by uh, another example here. Uh, this lowest stone here in the doorway, well you can see the thickness of the mortar joint here and let's pretend it's nice and even here and here it's different. It is uh, way thicker and this block is not uh, straight in comparison to this one. It's twisted out and kicks out and this stone is kicking out this way. So uh, if you uh, recall seeing any kind of uh, brick layer working, well they should be working with straight edges and uh, string lines. Uh, this wasn't done with a string line or a straight edge. This was just Mickey Mouse in there. If a first year apprentice does it, at his uh, first year uh, apprenticeship course at the uh, at the uh, Union Hall or uh, wherever the training takes place. Uh, this is a tear it down son and uh, start all over again. This is, this is supposed to be a finishing trade where uh, other than structure and integrity it should also look good. Looking good doesn't include Mickey Mousing in a one inch piece of nonsensical brick right here at eye, eye height next to the front entrance door that this one inch strip of brick is not happening it shouldn't be happening I'm also looking at that little triangular piece of uh, rock there that's uh, fitted there where the arch is uh, turning it doesn't look like it's been it's been cut to uh, be made uh, made to fit in that particular spot and the other side is even uglier. That little triangular uh, block here is not made to uh, fit that spot. It was just a piece of garbage in the, uh, in the garbage pile that was picked up and uh, thrown in there as an afterthought. And I'm noticing another serious, serious issue that's addressed over and over again in the building code. That block there is just dangling. There's nothing underneath to support it. If that gets hit by a basketball, it's coming down on somebody's head. The same, pre same situation predictably repeats itself on the other side. There's nothing underneath that triangular piece of block on, uh, on the gable end here. So uh, that should not uh, look like so. Let me just uh, verify my idea. Here along the corner, on uh, workmanship and uh, support. Yes, unfortunately there's nothing underneath the bricks here. But this one is somewhat resting on a foundation. But the, uh, but the next, uh, next brick is totally unsupported. It's only held by the, uh, by the itty bit of friction between uh, the uh, mortar that's behind this and along its edges. There's nothing underneath to support it and it shouldn't be so, I'll show you in the building code. And again, a low level of workmanship. You can see uh, this corner somewhat supported uh, on the foundation and the next brick is totally unsupported, just dangling here. And as we turn the corner, you can see no support whatsoever underneath the bricks. So let's take a look at the building code, what the code explicitly uh, says about the situation. Here in, uh, uh, part 9, we're looking at part 9 and chapter uh, chapter 20 and 
Yeah. Part 9, Section 20, Masonry. Mortar. Mortar materials. Building code uh, has some uh, standards here. And uh, one thing about building code, this is the bare minimum. You may feel free to make your brickwork stronger anytime you like. You may not make it weaker at any point. So let's see here. Uh, water and aggregate shall be clean that's being used in a mortar mix. Let's see. Uh, uh, the mortar mix, um, the proportions shall conform to a table below here. We'll take a look at it in a minute. Uh, the mortar mix shouldn't be uh, older than two and a half hours. And uh, there's more uh, proportions there. Uh, you can read more about mortar joints. And in this table here, you can see that uh, the amount of uh, cement used in the uh, mixture, cement, lime, and sand, uh, they have definite proportions like a one to one to half to one. Uh, ratio or uh, whatever it is and the building code regulates uh, how the mortar mixes should look like we could take a sample of the uh, mortar mix that we found and uh, send it to the lab to to see how much it confirms to this table uh, probably it doesn't or none at all or or uh, not by far the other idea here in the building code I want to show you is Masonry support. Let's read this one together. All masonry and all masonry includes brick face veneer. All masonry shall be supported. I didn't see any support on this brickwork. So all masonry shall be supported and for support you have a couple of options. You can support masonry on masonry. You can support it on concrete. You can support it on steel. And you can also support it on uh, on uh, wood frame uh, foundations uh, with uh, treated woods, and uh, that's what it says in uh, that uh, other part of the uh, building code. And uh, to uh, emphasize the support idea, the, the same concept, uh, the lintels and arches. We've got an arch there, but we don't have masonry lintels. There's nothing above the windows. No masonry work above the windows, but we do have an arch. So, uh, masonry over openings shall be supported, again, by steel or masonry or reinforced concrete lintels or masonry arches. And this support, uh, if it's steel, it, uh, it, it should be an angle iron. Okay, an angle iron looks like this, and it's got two parts or two legs. A vertical and a horizontal and you can see here specific dimensions minimum amounts again there the word minimum uh, what should support the brickwork and there is uh, thicknesses belonging to these uh, uh, specified supports as well and uh, depending on uh, what kind of brick and what kind of masonry uh, we are supporting that's how you you should confirm to uh, minimum dimensions on the angle steel that you're using. A third idea that reinforces the uh, concept of uh, supporting masonry is the amount of support here. Masonry veneer of solid units. These are solid units on the wall. Resting on bearing support. And this uh, part of the sentence here repeats, just in case you missed the previous page there. So masonry veneer of solid units resting on bearing support shall not project more than one-third of the width of the veneer. In other words, uh, two-thirds of them should be supported and one-third of the uh, face veneer you may cantilever out, but not more. Uh, we have seen that uh, basically none of the stones are supported at all as prescribed in the building code there. One more concept that applies to uh, building uh, masonry is uh, tying. There should be ties in place 
holding the face veneer to the uh, wood frame behind it and uh, this one here it reads uh, masonry veneer 75 millimeters or more in thickness now we don't have any uh, thing of this thickness we've got uh, thinner masonry veneer but again just the concept of supporting the uh, masonry on uh, multiple fronts is confirmed here that uh, these ties should be uh, nailed to the wood frame and uh, should be so and so thick and wide and should have such and such spacing uh, again masonry should be supported and uh, that's what we uh, didn't see on this building so back to the building it failed on multiple fronts its mortar mix is most likely uh, doesn't conform to the to the building code its installation although building code doesn't see anything about walls being being plumb and corners being square uh, so uh, the installation can only be described as uh, unprofessional or ugly uh, that one uh, doesn't really uh, bear upon the uh, structural integrity of the house however the brickwork should be supported on uh, the foundation itself or on uh, pieces of uh, angle steel so those are the issues that are missing on uh, this one and that just makes me wondering how in the first place first place did this pass inspection by the city the purpose of the inspection and uh, making an occupancy permit is that the house is safe I don't see the spirit of the building code preserved here that this house is inspected in the in the integrity of, uh, of safety that this place be a good place for kids to play at and for the occupants not to be a hazardous place